remember much of that lecture. The doctor gave me this medicine for my cough, but I don't like it. It seems to make me awfully sleepy, and I can't follow my lectures. Well, if you don't take it, none of us will be able to follow our lectures. All we'll hear is you coughing. Oh, dear. Do you think I'll annoy everybody? Yes. You could study at home for a couple of days. You know, have some time off until it gets better. Oh, I couldn't do that. I'd miss too much. And I get really uncomfortable when I have a lot of catching up to do. Last year, I missed a whole week when I fell off my bike and had that enormous bandage on my hand. It took me ages to do all the work when I came back. Oh, you worry too much. You can work at home. Just get Mr. Gray to tell you which parts of the course book we'll be covering and read it yourself at home. All he does is go through the book anyway. You might as well do it yourself. Oh, that's a bit unfair. I think Mr. Gray's really nice. He's always willing to stay behind after class if you don't understand something. Being really nice and never in a hurry doesn't make him a good lecturer. Anyway, I think you should look after your health first, and ours. If we sit in that small, hot room with you for the next three days, we'll all have your cough by the end of it. Mm, perhaps you're right. I don't care about myself, but I wouldn't like other people to blame me for their illnesses. I have got a bit of a temperature now, too. So maybe I'll go and see Mr. Gray after lunch and tell him I won't be at this afternoon's lecture. Or the next two. Come on, you've got to get better. I suppose you're right. Then we can all go out as we planned at the weekend. OK, then. I don't want to miss that. And I do feel ill. That's the end of the listening. <clears throat> right. Here you have the script, in case you might need it, right? But the important thing here is that students might have done this kind of prediction. Now, this type of listening may be heard twice. But the thing is that in real life, you know, we don't have people repeating things. But that's up to you. That depends on your class, on the type of, of learners you have, on your classroom management, etc. There are many factors to take into account. So that's uh, only, you know, it, um, a matter of, of um, common sense. Now, <clears throat> some problems, some of the many problems learners may have are, for example, these. When they have to understand every word, right? They say, when I have to understand every word, I can't understand anything, right? But what you mustn't do is Try to slow down your speech. That would be an absolute mistake because in real life people don't slow down when they speak. Okay? So what we must try to do is to give them passages with a lot of redundant materials. What's that? For example, is to give them um, passages where they are, between the gaps there is a lot of extra information. That is what we call redundant material, right? so that they can only focus on what they need. Now, the other thing is that they say, I can't understand fast speech. I can't understand um, natural, native speech. Again, it's very similar to the other, right? You can't try to understand um, other types of, I mean, any type of speech if it's not natural, right? Or at a, at a normal speed. Now, <clears throat> here, it's important to tell students that they will find words which are not pronounced completely. I mean, for example, the word can is not can, it's can. Or they don't say sometimes all right, they say all right. Okay. So this is the way you speak in a normal way, in a natural way, right? So they, they must get used to um, listening to that as, as much as possible, let's say. Now, they need to hear things more than once. Again, the same thing. It's um, not necessary. And as I uh, told before, if you need to, if you think that it was the, perhaps too difficult, the listening, then you can go back and ask them to listen to it again, perhaps changing the activity with a closed test, etc., <clears throat> as I showed you some minutes ago. Right, find it difficult to keep the thing is too, for example, too long or they can't focus attention. Again, you must tell them that if they miss an answer, 
If they miss what they think the answer was, they must try to move on, not try to get stuck there trying to think, oh, what, what did he say, uh, what did she say? No, because in that case you will miss not just that answer but two or three more. Now, get tired. They say, oh, I get tired. Of course, if you, if you listen to something you don't understand, you will get tired, right? So the thing is to give them, to offer material in short chunks, right? As um, I showed you at the beginning, to divide the normal speech is usually divided into chunks, right? Unless it is a lecture or something like that. But even if it is a lecture, right? The, the speaker makes some pauses, right? Uses some feelers like, um, or well, so, um, so that people don't get tired, right? And then it's good for them to, to, to be aware of this, right? And teachers must try to offer things in chunks, right? And stop. You make them do something and stop. Especially in the very elementary levels, right? At the beginning, when they're just learning to learn English, I mean, beginning to learn English, right? Trouble with sounds, again, we have some, you know, um, some problems with the pronunciation. This, of course, is um, another topic, pronunciation. If you, pr if you misread or you pronounce a word badly, you will expect to hear the word in that way. So, if you mispronounce the word, when someone says the word correctly, you won't understand. You will expect to listen the, the, to the word the way you pronounce it. So, again, exercises with you know, phonetics or um, sounds, you know, special sounds are very important in this case. <clears throat> All right. Well, the final question that you may be you know, um, asking yourself now is, how do I choose the right listening for my students? Well, there's not just one answer for this, but just, you know, you must use your common sense again. You know, no textbook provides the ideal type of listening. So we teachers need to adapt many times, you know, to change the, the text sometimes to make them more easily understood for our students, right? Again, depends on the level, on their age, etc. All right? So that's all I can say for today. And I hope you can use some of these ideas with your students in class and successfully.